July 19th town board meeting. If everyone could please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we could bow our heads in prayer and give thanks for this day and give thanks for living in a country that allows us to gather today and gather to deliberate on the important matters before our town government. We give thanks for our first responders, our police officers and firefighters, our EMTs, our teachers, and all of the medical professionals who serve our community. We also give thanks to our veterans, for our veterans, and of course, we give thanks and we keep in our thoughts and prayers for the bravest men and women in the world, those serving in the United States Armed Forces, protecting us both overseas and here at home. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's start with introductions to my right. Good evening, Diana Quast, town clerk. Tom Diana, councilman, deputy supervisor. Matt Slater, town supervisor. Sergio Esposito, councilman. Luciana Howitt, councilwoman. Dave Paganelli, superintendent of highways. Adam Rodriguez, town attorney. Thank you very much. And Mr. Paganelli, I'm seeing that you've Got the red shirt for the yes. highway? The last time I was here, somebody made fun of me because I had a suit on with a different <laughs> colored shirt. So I had to go out and buy specific dress shirts, so, uh -huh. you know, to represent. <laughs> well, let's start with um, the weather. Uh, right now we are experiencing our, a pretty intense heat wave. I just want to remind everybody uh, that we have cooling centers uh, located at the JV Mall and the John C. Hart Memorial Library up in Shrub Oak in case anybody needs to cool off. Um, again, just be very careful out there. Please stay hydrated. Try to stay indoors. Uh, watch out for our furry friends. It's hot for them as it's hot for them as well. Uh, and again, the the heat should subside by the end of the week. I do want to thank the Mohegan Lake Improvement District and Ken Belfer for organizing a wonderful Lake Day this past weekend. And I also want to congratulate them all uh, on the new Tall Timbers Trail. Uh, we had a wonderful week, uh, wonderful day out there, right, Serge? First time on Mohegan Lake. Fantastic! It was uh, actually quite an experience, and I, I kept mentioning the the uh, the community spirit, which yeah. I love, and the camaraderie between all the beaches, and they were competing against <laughs> each other for what was it? The uh, spirit of the lake. Uh, legends, legends of the lake. Legends of the lake. It was, it was, uh, it was really. It was. We had a good time. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Mohegan Lake is uh, a, a historical gem in our community. Uh, an environmental gem of our community. And I also want to thank uh, Senator Harcum because he did announce a $100,000 grant for Mohegan Lake Improvement District so that they can upgrade their aeration system. Uh, and that aeration system is going to prove uh, vital as we continue to combat uh, harmful algal blooms, which we've dealt with over at Mohegan Lake over the years. Uh, but it's going to be wonderful to have that installed. And I know that Mohegan Lake Improvement District and all the beaches and associations are going to be thankful once it's once it's completed so again thank you to senator harcum i also want to thank the lions club for another wonderful concert series uh, but i also really want to thank yorktown 100 and the climate smart communities uh, task force uh, for their electric car show we had about uh, 12 to 15 ev cars out for people to take a look at uh, ask, ask uh, questions to their drivers about and get more educated on ev cars uh, speaking of our Climate Smart Communities Task Force, I am thrilled, excited uh, to announce that we were designated uh, a bronze Climate Smart Community by the state of New York. This is a tremendous, tremendous recognition. It took an awful lot of hard work. I want to thank our task force. I want to thank Kira Brunner, who is just uh, a, a real force behind uh, the accomplishment here, helping us stay organized and and uh, making sure that she stays on top of the certification. She's done a wonderful job herself. Uh, and so that's a, a really big deal for the town and really solidifies us as a leader in combating climate change. And so we're going to be announcing this uh, later next week with our CSC task force members. Uh, but I couldn't contain the, the excitement any longer. And we've been waiting a long time for this. So very happy to announce again uh, Climate Smart Communities bronze designation by New York State for the town of Yorktown. Uh, let's see. We also have, uh, if you go out to Patriot Park, you'll see, and I want to thank our highway superintendent, and I see our director of planning, John Tegeter, is here, uh, and I also want to thank our parks department, but you see the lines for the path 
uh, that we've been talking about for quite some time uh, so that we can get pavement along Patriot Park so that you can now, you will be able to go from the commuter lot down to the bike path and be able to enjoy uh, the monuments that are there that recognize our brave warriors who uh, are from the town of Yorktown. Uh, and you're going to be able to do that without going on the grass because we're going to be putting a, a pave, uh, excuse me, a, a pathway in. Correct. Uh, and so uh, if you go out to Patriot Park and you see those lines, we expect, uh, what, next week, I believe, we expect uh, to start seeing some more action out there yes. with the Parks next Department. Next week they should be rolling out the Item 4, and hopefully the week after, weather permitting, borrowing a paver, we should be able to pave it. Great. Well, it's great to see progress uh, here in the town of Yorktown. Speaking of progress... It's that week, the week we've all been waiting for. Trader Joe's opens this Thursday. Mm -hmm. So mark your calendars and plan accordingly, please. The 7.55 uh, kickoff over at Trader Joe's, 8 o'clock. Who's going to be the first one in? I think it's going to be Councilman Diana. That's mm -hmm. my bet. Uh, but we are excited to welcome Trader Joe's officially to the town of Yorktown this Thursday. Um, I do want to just emphasize the amount of work that went into prep to preparing for this. Uh, we understand and recognize traffic mitigation is of the greatest concern. Uh, so about eight weeks ago, I would say, we, we met with uh, the property owner. We met with executives from Trader Joe's, the police department, the planning department, the highway department. Uh, and we were able to put together, and our, and our engineer, and we were able to put together uh, what we believe is a, a proactive plan to try to mitigate the expected traffic. We are trying to learn from the past, uh, specifically Popeye's fried chicken, which uh, we weren't expecting uh, so many people to love that uh, fried chicken, especially that drive through fried chicken. But um, uh, so you will see there are signs out there now just alerting uh, motorists so that they're prepared to begin on Thursday. Uh, you will see Yorktown police officers there. They're off duty Yorktown police officers that are being hired uh, by Breslin Realty uh, to help with the traffic. You will also see private security that's, be, that's been hired to help with the traffic flow. Uh, and I also want to thank Breslin Realty because they worked with our engineering department uh, and our planning department and were able to free up about 50, I think it was 50 slots. Uh, John, 50 parking spots? 50 parking spots that we were able to free up? Area, yeah. yeah, just I think maybe north of 50 but 50 parking spots that, that they were using for outdoor storage. So a real team effort to try to make sure that uh, the community isn't negatively impacted by such an exciting uh, welcoming, but we are very happy to say Trader Joe's will be... Hashtag open for business, baby. That's right. <laughs> On Thursday. So we're looking, looking forward to that. On some of the other projects in town that we've been working on, um, I wanted to just uh, remind residents, if you've received a letter in the mail regarding a late tax payment, to please contact the tax receiver's office. In the last week, we've already collected nearly $100,000 in late tax payments. Uh, but again, if you have uh, received a, a notice or a letter, uh, please contact the tax receiver's office, and they'll be able to walk you through the next steps. Our water relining bid for Strawberry and Hanover, which will be the first time in nearly, what, 20 years plus? Plus. Uh, that we're finally going to be getting this uh, water relining maintenance done is scheduled to be open this Friday. So we're looking forward to seeing uh, that move forward. Uh, next week, we'll be visited by Corin Maine uh, to talk about the water meter project uh, that will be uh, starting uh, this year as well. And so they're going to be putting the next steps forward to us uh, at next week's work session. We also received late today word that we that the town received the second installment of its ARPA money. So we do have a total now in our possession of $3.7 million. The ARPA committee has met two or three times. I think it's twice. twice. Uh, and so we've been going through the survey results. Uh, and um, I think we're going to be hearing from the committee hopefully next week mm -hmm. on some of the projects that have been identified for us to invest this uh, $3.7 million in federal dollars uh, in and so that's also very exciting as well. Uh, this Wednesday, Ju uh, July twentieth at six p.m., the library is hosting a meet and greet with an alpaca from Clover Brook Farm. So feel free to drop into the John C. Hart Memorial Library. Oh, those are the ones that spit at you. I think those are llamas, but those I think the llamas? alpacas. I think the alpacas do uh, okay. spit at you too. Uh, bring your glasses, folks. Yep, definitely bring <laughs> bring your glasses. Uh, this Friday over at Jack DeVito Veterans Memorial Field. Uh, the young Yorktown youth have selected the bad guys as this this uh, next movie, outdoor movie, hosted by the Parks and Rec Department. Starts at 8:15. The 
usually have a food truck or two out there, and it's a lot of fun, uh, of course, weather permitting. Uh, but that'll be this Friday, 8-15. And last but not least, uh, next week starts Section 3, Bulk Trash Pickup. And so we want to thank our Refuse and Recycling Department uh, for continuing that great service even through the hot summer months. And finally, this weekend, if you have a broken electronic or a broken item at home, rather than just throw it out, bring it over to the Repair Cafe. Uh, that's going to be hosted at Grace Lutheran Church, the corner of Curry and Gomer. Uh, and that is this Saturday. And they will... It's amazing what they can fix. Uh, so make sure that if you have something that, uh, rather than chucking it, bring it on over, and hopefully they can fix it for you. Uh, and with that, uh, oh, uh, just from the county of Westchester, um, I did want to remind everybody that the National Suicide Prevention Hotline <coughs> has changed its number. <coughs> it is now a three-digit three digit national line of 988. Again, you just dial 988, and that gets you to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Uh, the county did ask uh, that we remind folks that uh, they are offering monkeypox vaccinations uh, Wednesday the 20th, July, uh, Monday the July 25th, and Wednesday the 27th down in White Plains. Uh, and those who are qualified to receive the vaccine are, are encouraged and welcome to make an appointment. Uh, and then last but not least, the Westchester County 9-11 Related Illness Memorial Committee is soliciting names of those who have died of a 9-11 related illness, and their names will be added to the memorial at Kensico, Kensico Dam in Valhalla. So please, uh, if you know of anybody, any loved ones uh, who have uh, unfortunately passed due to a 9-11 related illness, uh, you can either reach out to my office or you can contact Kyle McIntyre. Uh, down in the in Westchester County, his number is 914-995-2917, and we can add your loved one uh, to that memorial again at Kensico Dam. And that concludes my report to the town. I'll give it over to the deputy supervisor. Thank you, supervisor. How's everybody doing? It looks like we're running into some hot weather. Please be careful out there. Keep the pets out of the car, if at all possible. Um, other than maybe to bring them to the vet or something like that. But even if you leave them in the car with the windows open, they could uh, get heat stroke in there much easier than us, even with water and so forth in the car. So remember our furry friends. Um, I'm going to echo the supervisor. Thanks to Ken Belfer and Mohegan Improvement. Um, we had a great late day. I went on the hike. Um, supervisor had... Had uh, a couple tag-alongs, one on his shoulder and one on his hand. So uh, he was leading the pack. I was bringing up the rear in case he fell down. But it was an, it's a nice walk. Um, you get the opportunity up in the highlands, take it. It's, it's really a nice trail. A lot of work was done up there, and, and the community spirit that's up in that area is, is second to none. Um, they're really proud of their beaches. They're proud of their hiking paths. They're, high to, they're proud of their community. And, and uh, that's, that's, there's a lot to be said for that in this community. Um, and I went to the hole in one contest, didn't make it, but I went, um, it was, it was fun. A lot of people had some f fun out there hitting the balls down, trying to get the hole in one. And I didn't stay to see if anybody did actually get it. Does anybody know if anybody got the hole in one? I don't know. Anybody here? No. Okay. But, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, that's about all I got for today. And, oh, we had a, uh, uh, vitamin shop open. I believe Sergio is going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. That was out in trouble next to uh, right near the Novacenzo restaurant. So that's all I got. Thank Have a great so rest of the summer. I just wanted to, before I turn it over to Sergio, I just wanted to say that we've had, because of Lake Day, <coughs> and, and people seeing Lake Day and celebrating Mohegan Lake, we've had a number of questions uh, from people about whether or not they can access Mohegan Lake. Mohegan Lake is made up of a number of beach associations. Those are private beach associations. You will know uh, if you are in one of those beach associations based on your tax bill. Uh, they were uh, park districts, essentially. Uh, they are taxing districts. Uh, but we do have Rock Hill Park, uh, which is publicly accessible. Uh, while there's not a beach there, there is a wonderful uh, area to hike through that, and it uh, borders uh, Mohegan Lake. And, of course, uh, if you're looking for a fresh body of water to either fish or uh, uh, just enjoy the beach, you can always come over to Sparkle Lake, which is uh, publicly accessible uh, for all of Yorktown's residents. Again, if you have any questions about whether or not you are uh, able to access any of the Mohegan Lake beaches, feel free to call my office at 914-962-5722, extension 200, and we're always happy to answer those questions for you. 
No, it's been Esposito. You want to go? You go. So, uh, just touching on that, um, yeah, Lake Day was fantastic, and, and they had the Legends of the Lake. So, uh, I, I, po I posted a few videos. There's a, there's a legend that there's a shark in the lake, um, and I think they, they said the shark had babies. Um, and then in another, another area, you know, they had a big shark where you could take pictures with, and that was one beach. Um, and on another beach, they had all the people that have been on the lake for such a long time. These are all the beach colonies, the beach communities. Um, that the supervisor was speaking about. But I did speak to the de facto authority on Mohegan Lake, and that's Ken. Ken, Ken Belfer, Belfer, the lake man. So uh, <laughs> there, are a couple, there are a couple of options. There's a piece of, a piece of property, he told me, behind CVS yep. off Mohegan Avenue, yep. which is actually town property, and it borders the lake. Um, at some point, maybe the town could look at, at developing that and clearing it out. It's just a whole bunch of woodsy area, but... It is open to the public. He wanted everybody to know that. And there is one uh, beach colony. It's called the Mohegan Colony that anyone can join. And that will give you uh, the right to use their beach as well um, and access to the lake. And that's called Mohegan Colony. And it's $275 per family per year. Um, and they have like, a, it's, it's a really nice place. They have swing sets there. It's, they have a beach, of course, you know, and it's right on Mohegan Lake. And that gives you access to the lake. You could park a boat there, uh, you know, uh, um, a raft or something like that, you know, that kind of stuff. So there, it, there are options if you did want to uh, partake and take advantage of uh, Mohegan Lake, you could join that way. Um, uh, that, that spot that he was talking about behind CVS, if you like to fish, that's a great a place. Yeah. Great fishing spot, it really is. Yeah. So I think he said he said at some point the town was supposed to make it a beach. But I don't, I, you know, I don't know. He knows so much history about the lake, and the lake is really wonderful. And I'm glad they're getting a, a grant because I, I think there's a lot of stuff that we could be doing to make that lake more viable. Uh, not, not for commerce or anything like that, but, you know, to get rid of the algae problem and, and, and get it pro more proper aeration. I mean, it's really a gem in Yorktown. I, we took some really nice pictures that day, and, and, and it's just absolutely beautiful. You forgot the most important thing. Which was that? My friend the snake. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. With Ranger Rick? Ranger Rick. <laughs> Ranger Rick oh. talked him into holding a snake. I'm like, yeah. I'm Around here. my neck. I'll take the picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was pretty fun. Right, no way. For you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, um, I got to meet Jay Cutler. He's a professional bodybuilder. He came from Las Vegas. Uh, he was there for the grand opening of Foundation Vitamins and Sports Supplements. Um, and uh, they are in the same parking lot as Novacento. As a matter of fact, the same owner opened this place up. Uh, and what I did notice is as soon as I walked out of there, because I was surrounded by all these like huge bodybuilders that I needed to hit the gym. So I re-upped my uh, subscription to Solaris. Ha haven't gotten there quite yet, but uh, I'm looking <laughs> to get there. Ed uh, Lachtman, Councilman Lachtman, opened up a new business. It's called Ice Cream Emergency. He's got a bus where it comes around and, uh, you know, he does parties and stuff like that. It's all over Facebook. But he did have his grand opening uh, with the Chamber of Commerce yesterday. And uh, I wish him the best of luck and congratulations. Um, the chamber, speaking of the chamber, uh, visited its, um, released its new visitor's guide. So there are hard copies available. You can call the chamber, 914-245-4599. You can go to their website, and you could see the digital version of the visitor's guide. It's really nice. It has, you know, uh, restaurant contact information, all sorts of really useful information. You should check it out as well as it's a member's directory. I'm excited about Trader Joe's. Um, and lastly, I want to just congratulate Lieutenant DeLulio. Um, he is walking out on Friday, July 22nd. Um, that's this Friday. He has dedicated his entire career to Yorktown, and, and um, we congratulate him and wish him the best in his future endeavors. And um, I think that's all I got. Okay, so I fourth everything you guys said from Ranger Rick to the lake to Trader Joe's. I also want to give our councilman here, Sergio Esposito, a grand shout out. The Parks and Rec have been having issues with their cameras. They've been down. The ranges were anywhere from five to eight thousand dollars, and Sergio went out there on his own and repaired them for us. Thank so you. not only did he volunteer and show up with his time, but he also took care of that, knowing that we do want better security in our parks. And that is what we have to, yeah, it was in Granite Knolls, correct. Um, I do want to say that I highly recommend sunblock and bug spray because after my hike, I did remove a tick. So, True. so just be mindful of that. Check your kids, check your pets. 
Um, and don't forget to go out and, and enjoy and wander the trails. We have so many dedicated um, humans here in this town that have been giving us places to run off to, to have a moment, to a break, and um, it's, they're really beautiful. So that's all. Awesome. Great. Cool. We'll turn it over to our highway superintendent, Dave Paganelli. Thank you. Good evening, Yorktown. Um, we'll start with paving. We're done with paving. Um, very happy with the way it came out. I'm not very happy with the amount of work that we got done. Um, cost of asphalt went from $92 a ton laid in place in December of the beginning of December last year to currently $118.65 laid in place, which is an increase of 30%. 30% means 30% less roads. So we did do nine miles of road this year. Kicked up, we were trying to break under 20 years replacement schedule. Kicked us back up to 22.22. Um, so we lost a little ground in addition to which um, we've sort of reached a point where we cannot keep overlaying roads we can't just come out put an inch and a half to two inches of blacktop on a road because now if you look at underhill avenue you see a perfect example catch basins are this thick you know that's the yeah. basin back so it effectually eventually you have to start milling your roads this year we milled about 60 percent of our roads which added an additional 26 percent to the cost so if you figure that out it comes in somewhere around 42 percent overall that we weren't able to accomplish which would have been great because it would have been another what's 42 percent times nine 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 eighteen thirty six thirty seven you know three point seven miles yeah would have been good but what came out what we did came out well um we are currently hyper focused on trees and sight lines all right sight lines are either signs that are obfuscated by brush we have a lot of the um Kudzu vine in Yorktown, which is not your friend. It's covering everything it grows. You know, they call it a mile a minute vine, I believe. And so if you see anything in your neighborhood, <laughs> don't do that. If you see any if you see anything in your neighborhood, um, please call 962-5781 or dpaganelli at yorktownny.org and let us know about it. You know, we can't be everywhere, we can't see everything. Um, just today I noticed coming up from um, sure. where former supervisor Grace lives on Hanover. Um, the All the signs heading north on Hanover are obfuscated. You guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, as well as intersections, you know, um, we want to make sure you have clear sight lines at intersections. So I'm going to wrap it up on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're allowed to have a little Thank fun Thank you, Yorktown. <laughs> We're allowed to have a little fun up here. Right, Dave? Yes. <laughs> Um, all right. Make fun of me because they say I gesticulate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Thank you, Dave, and thank you to your crew for doing a great, uh, great job out there. Uh, as a reminder, also to our, our residents, if you're seeing any of our crews, other highway, water, gar uh, refuse, out on the streets, please just be respectful of them. Let's not be driving 55 miles an hour around them uh, to see how close you can get to them. Remember, safety first, and please respect the fact that they're out there serving you. Give them a tap on the brake. Yes. Oh, actually, you know, and that, that sorry to jump in but our guys literally put their lives on the line mm -hmm. okay you can't come blasting around when we're paving east main street at 50 miles an hour screaming at him last week one of my guys two guys went out to do a tree that was down on broad street and one of them cut his leg with the chainsaw and got 18 stitches okay so this isn't like we're out there willy-nilly hoping mm -hmm. someone calls and we have something to do. In the middle of the night when it's That's wild. pouring rain, mm -hmm. we go out and we clear those roads and we make sure. So that's a pr perfect example of someone that got hurt on the job and that they're out there doing that because it's our responsibility to keep the roads safe. Yeah. So, you know, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. You got it. Uh, before we move on to the next portion of our uh, meeting, I just for, uh, neglected to mention that I had a meeting with NYSEG executives uh, regarding their smart meter installation project, which is expected to, and we're going to be hearing a lot about this in the coming months. It's not going to really be here until uh, probably the second quarter, end of second quarter of 2023, but you're going to be hearing about it beginning this fall. Uh, and so that's a, it's a smart meter project that was approved by the PSC, uh, which is the good news. Bad news is NYSEG has uh, right now a rate case before the PSC that they are negotiating, it is a one, they have requested a one-year rate increase of 22.5%. Uh, again, this is their initial uh, submission. 
uh, and it is a uh, negotiation with the Public Service Commission. Uh, there are expected to be hearings at some point later this fall, uh, but I think that's something since, again, the town of Yorktown has both Con Ed and NYSEG that we should make sure our residents are aware of and we'll be advocating for uh, hearings here in our community or at least nearby so that we can uh, voice our opinion on whatever the PSC and NYSEG agree on. Again, the 22.5 is the initial request. They have to go through a negotiating period with the Public Service Commission, which is what they're doing right now. And then whatever that uh, percentage increase is, that's what will be uh, brought to the public for public hearing. Keep in mind that this is just uh, the delivery cost. This is not the supply cost. They do not uh, they do not produce your energy, which is one of the things that we saw happen uh, earlier this year with uh, natural gas prices going through the roof originally. Um, and so just keep that in mind that if the production costs continue to increase, as we've seen them do, uh, that's just an added increase to the bill. So we're going to keep everyone uh, apprised on this uh, as, uh, as we get more information. Uh, but I did want to make sure that we uh, brought that forward and made the public aware of the beginnings of that process. Uh, with that, we're going to listen to Tom Diana's cell phone. Sorry. I'm joking. <laughs> and uh, I do want to wish John McMullen a speedy recovery. He's home recovering from a, a procedure. Uh, he assured down. us that he's going to be with us uh, at our next meeting. But, John, we wish you well. And uh, since we do not have John here. Sorry. Does your phone want to do um, poet laureate? Poem? It's, it's going on Siri, like all by itself. What's does Siri want to? Does she want to recite a poem? Give a report. <laughs> I did. I did. That's that, we're going to go to courtesy of the floor. Uh, courtesy of the floor is a reminder. Uh, three minutes is your timeline. Uh, we do once again uh, say to you all: you don't need to wait for courtesy of the floor to raise any concerns, issues, ask questions of your town officials. We are more than accessible. If you don't see us out in the community, you can always visit the town's website uh, to get our contact information. You can always contact the supervisor's office at 914-962-5722, extension 200. You can contact the clerk's office. You can contact any of our offices, our highway superintendent, our highway department as well, uh, as well as any of the town board members. Uh, we do ask, once again, as always, that you keep your comments directed uh, to the town board and that they are respectful of all and the town clerk will have the clock up at three minutes is it a cuckoo chime i don't really know because i didn't have time to test well it, it might be a cuckoo <laughs> chime but uh three minutes and we welcome your comments and your questions good evening Trey Kopstein. i wrote this last month but was unable to attend those board meetings although a bit late I wish to commend the Yorktown Police Department on their conduct of the recent vandalism investigation and the town board for allowing the investigation to go forward without interference. <clears throat> I have been told the following postings were made on a local organization's Facebook page. This organization prides itself on justice, diversity, equity, inclusion, and nonviolence. Since I do not have a Facebook account, I cannot independently verify the statements. For purposes of privacy, I will redact the names. However, each of the authors regularly appears at Yorktown board meetings and writes letters to the editor from the local print media. Comment number one, quote, hate does have a home here, and it has shown that it's quite comfortable in raising a family. We need immediate action from the town. A task force with deadlines for actions would be a good start. Comment number two. Comment number one, I agree. I believe it was three or four days after Supervisor Slater took office that the destruction of a local synagogue happened, which there was never any follow-up on. There must have been cameras. These acts of hate have continued in Walktown with no real plans to address. From comment number three, my thoughts exactly. We need an active extermination program. Alas, our current town board is simply not up to the task. As to statement number two, there was no destruction of a synagogue. A public menorah was damaged, and several churches sustained damage. The chief of police actually commented publicly about the vandalism. It is my understanding that there are no public cameras along roadways in Yorktown nor are there any, any LPRs on the public streets. 
It is also my understanding that the acts of vandalism with ethnic or racial overtones were actively investigated. I also believe that the author is an attorney, and an attorney should know that police agencies do not publicly discuss ongoing investigations or evidence that has not but that has been collected. Further, the town board does not and should not conduct criminal investigations. The conduct of criminal investigations is solely under the purview of law enforcement agencies. As most of us know, several arrests were made. As to statement number three, the definition of extermination is killing, especially of a whole group of people or animals. Exactly who is comment in number three looking to exterminate? The town board? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Copsey. Thank you, Mr. Copsey, I think. Next. Hi. Good evening, Susan Siegel. I have three short items. Uh, one, uh, in addition to your comments, I wasn't planning to talk about this, but I, all of the values of Mohegan Lake. I don't think the community knows that there is access to Lake Osceola through the, through the Caremount parking lot. And you can call on Planning Director Tegeter, I think I saw him here, mm -hmm. um, who was very instrumental in getting access to people who are kayak fans, all right? There is a pu there's public parking and there's a path from the Caremount parking lot th that close, the closest to Route 6 mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that would lead down to the lake. And I think most people don't know about this. That's great. All right, um, the second item is, uh, could you give me an update on what's happening with the fluoride issue? Mm -hmm. uh, each week when I'm here and I see the town engineer, <laughs> Um, I can't keep bugging him, and it's like one problem after the other, mm -hmm. and he's not here tonight, but as of last week, he said there were unfinished issues with the contractor. Mm -hmm. We are frustrated as whatever. Join okay. the club. All right. The third item is, please don't laugh at me when I bring this up, but having been at these meetings for like 40-something years, but since 2010 or 11, when the cameras were put in, Okay, there's been no change in the cameras. This podium was always on that side, and people and, and the cameras could, could zero in on the town board or on the speaker. As you know, many people, since the podium has been here, many of the speakers have turned to the audience and said, I apologize for my back being to you, mm -hmm. all right? And it's, it's kind of awkward, but I believe unnecessary, and I've been told that at the planning board and zoning board, the podium has been shifted back to that side. So I'm asking you, is there any reason why it has to be here? Because <laughs> since the cameras have not changed, and it's, I believe, but you can confirm this with Tom, that it's not an issue you know, for him. But I think it's out of respect for, um, for, the, for the people who don't like their backs being seen. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Next. Dan Strauss, uh, 56 here, resident. Uh, I agree with Susan. I was waiting for someone to mention it. I think it's kind of rude to uh, have our back to the uh, audience. Uh, I know that you have a reason for doing this because people tend to look back when they're talking. That's my understanding. But overall, I think uh, we still talk to you from there, and I, I feel it's rude. Uh, to be facing you, but to have our back to the audience. That's my opinion on that. Uh, Mr. Esposito, I have a question for you. Uh, back a few weeks ago, when we were, dis or you were discussing the Toll Brothers project, you made a comment that it was a little far. It was on the, re it's on the record. It was, a and then you commented about something about that they'd have to drive or, so maybe you could go back and why did you make that comment? I have a feeling why, but I'd just like you to explain why you made the comment. Yeah. It was a little far. Um, but no, I'll you don't have to. Just I'm just asking. I would like to hear a response to that. Uh, I, wanted, I was going to talk to Mr. Uh, uh, regarding Mr. Lachterman, but he's not here. So uh, I'll disregard that. Um, I will go to Trader Joe's. Uh, Trader Joe's is opening, and it's got nothing to do with an overlay district. It's a boon to the town. 
Hundreds of people have been looking for it. I'm not always negative in what I say. Uh, I think it's great. I think Giuseppe's is great, maybe greater. They're two different things. I go to Giuseppe's. Other people can go to Trader Joe's. I've been there. Not this one. Mm -hmm. I've been to others. Not and yet, uh, it doesn't knock me over. But um, that's okay. Uh, that's an example, though, that Yorktown doesn't have to be a walking town. It does not have to be a walkable town. That is an enclave of shopping that is flourishing over there at Trader Joe's. You've got that pizza place. You've got Dunkin' Donuts. Excuse me. You've got, uh, what's the other one? Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks, where my granddaughters, that's the only way they'll go, drive through. It's a lot of hogwash. We do not have to be a walkable town. You can have an economy without a walkable town. Yorktown is not designed to be a walkable town. Ask Mr. Diana what he thinks about whether it's a walkable town. Doesn't have to be. It can flourish without it. I know that you don't have to have an overlay district to make Yorktown flourish, and it doesn't have to be walkable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strauss. You. Anybody else courtesy of the floor? Hello. Hi. How are you? If you could just state your name for the record. Sure. Uh, do I have to move this? No. Yeah. My name is Anthony Pichette. I am a brand new resident here. Great. Welcome to New York. Uh, thanks. Um, it's funny. I feel like uh, I've watched a lot of videos uh, leading up to this, and I look at all of you. I even saw you. Uh, I think it was there's a walk over. I don't know the parks, but you were just talking about it's down by Acme that the track down there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Devito right. Field. And I yeah. saw you, and I looked for a second. I was like, oh, and then I'm like, oh no, he doesn't know me. I'm just gonna you <laughs> come know, over whatever. and say hi whenever and also, you want. I work in an industry where that happens to me a lot. I'm like, do I know them or are they just someone on TV? Yeah. So um, anyway, so I, I've watched a lot of videos to try to just feel like I belong a little bit because yeah. I'm brand new, so it's kind of hard. I've been I lived in the city for so long. And then coming out here uh, with my 18-month-old and my wife. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Lots of um, pizza here. Lots of that, pizza. Lots of pizza. Lots of pizza. We haven't been there yet. Yeah, but, there's not uh, enough. <laughs> we just um, uh, just gave her a uh, little one ice cream. I'm not going to talk about my kid the whole time. But I just <laughs> gave her ice cream for the first time. I'm so excited. There you go. Um, anyway, uh, that clock. I, uh, so... Um, but I did want to start off with a few good things because I know you guys hear a lot of like what's wrong and, and what's not, you know, so maybe it's because I'm new. Everything's good. Or <laughs> a lot of it's good. Uh, but I wrote them down. The library is fantastic. It's amazing. My little one, once again, all mm -hmm. roads point to her. Um, she loves playing on the toys. She takes all the books off the shelves. I have to put them back. That's fun. <laughs> um, uh, the, the pickup service, uh, I had people dumping, you know, people are sometimes dump trash around the corner and I didn't even know it was there. It was like a red sofa and I called the department and it came an hour. I mean, it was Good. like, whoa, uh, awesome. that was fast. Um, Grand Knolls Park is great. Uh, once again, the little one loves it. Um, so what's her name? Avery. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, I've watched so many videos too about you guys talking about uh, expansion and different ideas. Um, I just thought about, I mean, I'm sure other people have thought about, it, but more to have like a little coffee shop or a little mm -hmm. deli there or something. I mean, you got the pickleball people, they're hungry. You got the athletes, they're starving. Mm -hmm. And the kids, uh, they'll eat anything, right? Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So I, and also I went to go get a pool pass the other day and the, the person uh, wasn't even working, came back to help me out and, and set me up. So that was awesome. great. Two minutes? Oh, okay. All right. So the reason I came was, um, you know, it's so direct and specific, but you even were talking about this a little uh, a bit about the speeding. Um, it scares me because I live on a road. I live on Loader, mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. it's right at the end of that road, and cars are flying down there. Um, I didn't even know it was 30 miles an hour, the speed limit there. I'm like, what in the world? Because when I moved in, I was like, oh, this looks like a little road. And my wife and I were walking, all of a sudden, zoom, you know, people are flying by me. I've had cars uh, come on my butt. I've had one, two almost bump me, you know, and it's are you scary. On, are you on loader or are you on No, broad? that was Quaker. 
Oh, I'm not going to say the road. Quaker Church. Right. Thank Quaker you. Church. I keep saying Quaker Bridge, and it's yeah, not the road. No. Um, well, you live on Loader or I Broad? I live on Loader, on okay. the corner there. But you're on, on the, the corner, corner of Loader, Loader and, and Broad? Broad? Yeah. Oh, we know yeah. exactly where I mean, maybe. That's kind of where I live, just okay. in case. No. Um, but yeah, that's where I live. And it's kind of how I felt. Flying down. I mean, cars are flying. There's Skidmark yeah. yeah. right now yeah, on yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly. I live right up the street. I know right. exactly. Okay. We live right around the block. She literally lives around the corner. Yeah, we literally can walk to your house. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. That's cool. We're going to come have ice cream with Avery. Yeah, exactly. We have our own little ones. We might drop them off. Oh, oh. I, 10 more seconds is okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, my back's to you. Uh, but <laughs> when you were talking okay, about, um, you know, how people were whizzing by and even talking about, like, paving the roads, like, I don't want that. I mean, I know. I'm going to speak for myself. <laughs> A lot of people feel that I way. want it bumpier. I want it, like, slow down. I, I mean, this is just me. There's not, you know, but I do want it slower because it scares me, you know, like it really does. And, and it's, yeah. we're a little hidden and. And it's kind of got like a hell there. Too, it is. So, yeah. And and I see people like on their phones, you know, not all kids, but often people are, are just, you know, um, yeah. on their phones. So anyway, gosh, I timed this too and I'm way over. Um, but yeah, so it's really, I just wonder if there's a, like a conversation to be had going forward yeah. about ways to make it safer um, so people can walk a little bit, uh, so it could be a little more walkable and so I don't get hit by a car. I mean, the other day, some kids sped around the corner, Does came back you? and apologized, but I'm like, well, that wouldn't have been helpful if you yeah. crushed into my, my family, you know, and he didn't, wasn't malicious, mean, malicious. He just, that's what the, you're, you're used to. So, okay. all right, we'll, we'll, we'll address talking. that. Nope. Anthony, no, thank, thank you so you, much. Anthony. We'll address, we'll address you at the end. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else for courtesy of the floor? Any, anybody else for courtesy of the floor? Going once, going twice. All right, make a motion to close. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Comments? Um, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll start with Dan. Um, Dan, I don't, I'm not sure my comment. I mean, you're, you're asking me about something, you know, that I wasn't really prepared for. I can go back and look. Um, I, I don't know what context I w it was in. Um, my main issue, to be quite honest, with that project, and I, I love the project, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, is that it was going to remove that practice soccer field. And I have a big problem with that, and I think I made that perfectly clear that day. Um, there is a soccer field back there that, that, that the kids use, and the kids, I think, are, are really, you know, that's, that's why we're in Yorktown, right? That's why... That's why you moved to Yorktown, I'm sure, right? You have you have Avery, and you know you want to give her a place where she could walk around safely and play in parks and and that kind of stuff. So I think that was really my my main concern. Um, and as far as I know, it hasn't my concern hasn't been mitigated as far as as far as I'm uh, to my liking uh, or at all at this moment. So hopefully, uh, you know, as, as the project moves forward, um, things come up. You know, we could we could kind of work something out where you know we don't lose that soccer field, even though it's not big enough for uh, a game for kids to play games. They do use it um, to um, uh, to practice, and there is a shortage. I'm I'm in the sports community here. My sons play baseball, um, and 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 getting a field for baseball is always an issue. It's very difficult. Um, they're they're in high demand. Soccer is is no different, and so that that that's really my main concern with that. Um, as far as, as the walkability, I agree with you. But why can't we have both? I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think it's an impossibility to, for Yorktown to have both. And I know that a lot of people often complain about empty storefronts and, and this kind of stuff. And, and we've been doing the same thing for decades. So m maybe, maybe it's time to kind of like change something. I'll go back to baseball. My son comes up to me. He goes, you know, I'm swinging. I'm missing the ball. I said, well, change your swing, because if you keep swinging the same way, you're going to yield the same result. And so possibly, if we keep doing what we're doing in Yorktown, it'll yield the same result, which many people are really not uh, enthusiastic about, especially our Commerce Street area. So, you know, we're just looking for creative ways not to disrupt the entire planet, um, but to kind of change it up and move Yorktown forward, progress through preservation. And, and, and that's, I think, why the whole topic of walkability is, is, is always spoken about. Because a lot of people say, you know, you can't really walk around. I'll give you an example. Commerce Street. If you wanted to do three things on Commerce Street, and I, I use this example all the time. If you wanted to get a cup of coffee at Starbucks, 
you want to get money out of Chase, and you want to eat at Papoose, how would you do it? Well, you would start by getting in your car. You would drive to Starbucks and deal with the craziness of the parking that's going on over there that really has to be, uh, that, that is an issue that needs to be addressed. You park your car, you get your coffee, but you can't really stay in that parking lot and walk across the street to Chase because that parking lot is for Starbucks customers only, right? So now you got to get back in your car. And so you got to pull out, make a right, come down Commerce Street, make a left, go into Chase. And so you get out and you get some money out of Chase because, you know, you kind of, you know, you just need to 100 bucks or something, right? You want to have some cash in your pocket. But now you want to eat at Papoose, but you can't leave your car in Chase, right? Because if you, leave the, if you left your car at Chase, you know, that's for Chase patrons. You've already patronized the place. Now you got to get your car out of there. So to go next door, what you would do is you'd have to come out, make a left, make a left right away, and then pull into Papoose. So I think if, if we could come up with some kind of a solution to make it where, you know, you could park somewhere, make, you know, I don't know. I have a couple of ideas. I haven't flushed them out yet. I'm not going to introduce anything. But that would make the area different. Now, people will argue. They'll say, well, then there's nothing to walk to because there's no stores there. Exactly the point why we should try to change it up a little bit or do something different. Nothing drastic. It doesn't necessarily have to be a drastic change, but something else, something that may work. And so you plant the seed. You have to start somewhere because if you keep swinging the same way and you're missing the ball, you're going to keep missing the ball. And, that, that, that's, that's, and I think that's where the walkability comes up. And I know it frustrates you, but you, know, um, you, make, you make very good points, and I take everything that you say uh, very seriously. So just so you know I, you know, I have a lot of respect for you. You know that. Um, as far as the traffic goes, um, we could, we could uh, contact um, Officer Rohr. He's the one that, that heads up all the traffic stuff in Yorktown. Um, and maybe he could step up some patrols there. There are things we could do. Yes, people speed. You know, you could put up as many speed bumps or stop signs. Or it, it's it's really it's not a Yorktown problem that people speed. It's like an everywhere problem. But I do agree with you. And yes, the town speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Um, and 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 I I know, I know uh, I'm, I'm probably guilty of it sometimes myself as well. You don't realize it. You know, and and you're in a rush. And um, but but it does create you know an unsafe uh, situation. And so I'll reach out definitely to Officer Roar and see, you know, what he has to say. I know your address or, or your streets. And, uh, and then we could start the conversation with that. If you send me an email, I'll follow up if you want it. So, so on that point, what, yeah, let Dave, me, let me just in interject that? there for a moment. Yeah. Actually, we have a traffic safety committee. Yeah. Councilman Diana, myself, and Officer Roar. So we're aware of it. At the next traffic safety meeting, we will bring it up and we will discuss it. You live on the corner of Broad and Loader. Loader. Loader and Quaker. Quaker. On the other end. Yeah, on, the other end. on the corner. As I'm coming down Loader to Quaker Church Road, you're on the left side? Yes. Okay. Getting some curb this week? Back. Getting some curb this week? Some curb? Yeah. Did you request curb from Somers for the front of your house? Did I? Yeah. I, I think you did. Well, they called me and asked me if they could do it. <laughs> we got, <laughs> yes. I think it was probably your wife. They actually called me today and... <laughs> he was looking for I don't cream, think Avery curve. picked up the phone. The, pro the problem there is I'm sure more of your speed is on Quaker Church than, oh, yeah. than, than it would be on Loader. We're not, we're not, no, no, no. Yep, yeah. sorry, sorry. So I will. Get a lad, if, lead the bad things. It's yes. Okay. <laughs> if you call our office, 9625781, and just leave your name and number, we'll. This way we can get back to you and let you know what's decided by Councilman Diana, myself, and Officer Roar. So with respect to if they're in, look, we experience this townwide. So there's not a lot of solutions for speed, unfortunately. You know, so but we do the best. Like, for instance, where you are, no way speed bumps are going to work. The grade is too deep, too steep already. So that's already off the table. So and that's sometimes we don't use them for control of speed, but... It, it does effectively slow people down. And David okay. said from, from time to time, we pave a road and people are mad or more oh, yeah. mad at us for paving the road <laughs> than if we left it bumpy because people would go slower if it's, it's bumpy. There are traffic, con traffic calming devices and 
we'll we'll, we'll take a look at actually, that. Actually, we did two roads, Greenwood and Baldwin this year, where I sent out notifications to all the residents asking them if they wanted their roads paved. Because yeah. <laughs> I said there will be no reason. solution, no solution for speed. There is no solution. No. Okay, so that that being said, do you want me to pave your road? Because I don't want to hear about it afterwards. I don't want to hear, oh, no, we need speed bumps now. We need stop signs. We need this. I'm asking you in advance. This is a problem. Are you willing to accept it to get your road paved? This way, it, it eases my my pain, so to speak. But Thank you. Good. Comments from anybody else? Dan, you're right. I, I always said that as to, to Sergio's uh, point that, you get in your car and you go from Starbucks to Papoose to, to, to CVS. People don't walk in this town. You know, that's, that's part of the problem. A lot of people don't, not all. Um, it would be nice if we could. But right now, like you say, we're, we're thriving with the commerce that is growing not just in the center of town, which is a good thing. Like you say, your granddaughters, I guess it was like to go to, to uh, Starbucks and nothing but the drive through so it kind of bolsters our facts on on uh, drivability through towns and so forth. And um, actually, Sergio had an idea some time ago with, um, and and it was something that uh, actually Eric D. Bartolo had come up with some time ago. I believe he was chamber president at that time. I forget though where they had talked about long before that, and even long before that, making Commerce Street one way and on street parking. Um, but that didn't fly, and maybe we'll revisit that. But we'll have to see where it goes. Um, and I think that's uh, the podium. I don't know how it got over there. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> welcome to you. I'm sorry. You want to? Okay. And welcome. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, because I don't have those answers sure. either. Um, okay, so number one, um, Jay, I think you were bringing up um, some hateful comments that were put on, on uh, Facebook against us or terms that were just really hurtful. Um, I, I appreciate them. They actually stung even hearing them in narrative. Um, so I just, I want to address that like, yes, we do not have any, we have no knowledge, nor do we have any skill to do any criminal investigation. However, we are very blessed to have the Yorktown Police Department. And um, those hateful comments based on hate has no home here, and then fighting for hate having no home here and having such hateful comments was definitely a confusing, hurtful thing to to read so thank you for bringing that up um as far as the trader joe's yeah it's super exciting and i'm kind of a, a culprit dan also of the drive through at starbucks um i order it for my husband at the yvac and they all just drive through and pick it up it's quite easy um i do agree with you we don't have to be a walkable town to flourish we don't have to do anything to flourish we could just keep going as we're going and, and little by little these magical things are happening i think bringing up ideas to make us more walkable. I think the key thing here is more to flourish. Whether it's walkable or not, it's to flourish, to keep a community that's affordable for us as taxpayers and a place where the Averys of the world or the kids of the world have safe places to play and also a community to build on and a community to admire. Um, so whether it's Trader Joe's or a mom and pop coffee shop from Brooklyn that wants to come up, I think they're all welcome because the truth is we need it, and we need the role modelship for our younger generations. Um, I know that I'm all for that. I would love to get a good cup of coffee. Um, ever since I moved out of the city, it's been rough. Um, Anthony, I understand also, I also have a corner. Um, my children love to go down the hill, and obviously there's a corner on each side. Sometimes the beautiful vegetation creates blockage, and you can't even see on the corners. Um, I think the traffic safety is definitely the way to go, getting a hold of them, and I'm pretty sure now that it's been heard, um, it'll get, it'll get passed. Maybe we can, you can email us your number so that we can kind of keep you updated on what's going on, curb and all. Um, as far as Lake Osceola and the Caremount, I would love to know more about that, Susan, if you could maybe show me, I could even meet you somewhere. I don't know where that is, um, but there are so many kids that I have from, from Mohegan Lake that say that they sometimes don't want to go on their own beach and they want to go and explore other areas and maybe Lake Osceola could be this other area they explore. I don't know if they've even known about it, but um, thanks for telling us about that. As far as the podium and the fluoride, I'm going to pass that on to, to Matt, and I think that's everybody. Um, as far as your comment with the, um, with the uh, 
the the far away. I don't know. I don't remember actually in what the dialogue was around that. I do know that that park needs a lot of work there, and I know that you were definitely discussing how we have such limited practice parks. Um, and I think that Toll Brothers was going to, and this is just me talking off the top of my head. My recollection was that Parks and Rec was going to receive some money for that park, in so that they can go ahead and put it into Hunterbrook or another park Hunter to better. Park. The, it was, it was Hunter Hunter Brook. Brook. It was. I don't remember exactly, but I do remember. an undeveloped field in Hunterbrook yeah. that the money from that development was supposed to go to to develop that second field in Hunterbrook. And okay. then, and then uh, Jimmy's going to find out what it would cost to... To restore it and keep it or not? Right. Right. And so, and, and I think that's where we left off. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if there's anything further at that, but um, I definitely remember that being it. So that's I, all. I forgot the fluoride. I'm sorry, Susan. Um once again, we have more holdups. Uh, we talked about them with the engineer, um, and we're in, in contact with the contractor now trying to get that rectified. But there's holdup after holdup after holdup. And what do you do when you have holdups? No, no not, from the, not from the audience. But the, what Councilman Diana is, saying, what is describing is the contractor is supposed to be out there today, and... No contract. Everyone's doing this now yeah. about why, where they were supposed to be, and what time. So, at this point, we we've, oh, well, engaged, we've asked our, our attorney to uh, engage the contractor um, from a legal standpoint. Um, it's just the the project that will never end, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, I know that we're frustrated by it. Uh, State Department of Health is frustrated by it, and um, uh, Joint Water Works is frustrated by it on a whole host of levels. Uh, but you know, at this point, we've asked our town attorney to engage, especially since this was supposed to be the last meet up yeah to fix it you know because there's nothing even to fix at this point it's all things that we can do ourselves so we don't even know why we have this contractor at this point but uh, i'm probably gonna get uh in, in hot water for even saying those comments but uh but needless to say it's going illegal and legal is uh is handling it from that from this point so uh that was that was yeah right that was a floor right <laughs> update um i did want to welcome anthony and your whole family to yorktown Welcome. Um, we uh, this year we started new resident forums where we invite you over to town hall you get to meet some of your elected officials. We introduce you to a lot of the services and everything that we provide. Uh, I think our next one, Councilman Esposito, is September. Yeah, I'll schedule sometime. it for September. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you received it, if you were here for the last one we did in May, uh, but we'll we'll send it out again and uh, I encourage you to come. But uh, Highway Superintendent Paganelli uh, is 100% right with the with the committee and uh, with him and Councilman Diane. I'm sure we can get uh, some some ideas about your your speed issue. Um, but yeah, it's uh, living around the corner. I think we all experience that, right? right Sometimes just Council enforcement. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Sometimes just the enforcement alone will. I'm will... sure we can get a speed radar out there with uh, Officer We'll check Roar. it out. And, um, and then, uh, you know, honestly, Mr. Kopstein, it's, um, it gets more and more frustrating when we keep hearing about these uh, episodes on social media. We just did a social media uh, 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 cyberbullying forum for kids. But it sounds like some of our adults need it, too. And, you know, it's not hard to figure out sometimes where the kids feel empowered to say the things that they do online and treat each other the way they do online when they see adults doing the same to each other. And, um, uh, you know, so it's very disappointing. Um, but I do want to thank the police uh, chief, uh, Robert Noble, and our partners at Ask and NAMI who joined me for this cyberbullying. It is available uh, for the whole public to watch on the Government Access Channel and on the town's website and on you know, our YouTube channel. And it sounds like more than just our kids need to watch it. So uh, I really do encourage members of the public to check that out because, you know, I say it, you know, rather publicly now. Uh, but so I believe social media is the great divider. I just think it just pulls our whole world apart in so many different ways. It teaches us how to t treat each other in just the most god awful, disrespectful manners. Say whatever you want with no accountability, uh, and it really just drives stakes through our community, through our country, and through our world. And I, I see uh, I see people saying adios to Facebook and and uh, jumping off of social media, and I'm actually envious. I'm actually envious because I can't wait for the day where I'm not on there. Uh, and I just I just really. It's a shame because I actually still remember the very day that I signed up for Facebook when I was in college. Yeah, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Uh, and now I just see it as, as just such a detriment in so many ways. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, as a community we can recognize that and just be better. And, and I think it, it really is a top-down 
uh, problem that we have to figure out. So, uh, but I appreciate you raising that, uh, raising that with us. Susan, you got your answer on the fluoride positioning of the podium. Um, I don't know if our clerk wants to speak towards that. I can tell you, I, I don't mind it. And I, and I recognize the, uh, the comments. Um, but I also recognize that we're here for a reason, um, meaning the town board and those who come to courtesy of the floor or to address the board are there for a reason to address the board. Uh, and so while I recognize the positioning that it may people may be uncomfortable to have their back turned to the public, I also remind everybody that when you come to the podium at a town board meeting, you're coming to speak to the board. And right, so not we create get your, allyship. And... Well, we get your full attention, and <laughs> you get sense. our full attention. And I think that is something that I think has worked since we've made this adjustment. But That's true. What would happen is that if it was on the side, people were talking in the audience more than they were talking to the town board, which is why it was moved to the center. Oh. But we're in the process of redoing our audio room, including our cameras. And if you look up, we've replaced all the speakers in the room, and, and you'll see that that's helped a lot. Yeah. Um, but we're also going to put in a smart podium so that we can hardwire it to our monitor system. We have a lot of times Apple laptops don't really go through the system. So we want to be able to hardwire them or use wireless mm. to help with our presentation. So once we get everything done and set up, then you'll be able to. Uh, I thought it was just Jorina's laptop. Jo yeah, I was going to say, is that the I Jorina thought it was just the Jorina laptops that didn't connect. No. <laughs> Jorina's a troublemaker. Yeah, he is. So, but that, he actually you know, gets it right all the time. That's, I think that's, uh, thank you for the clarification on the podium. And I just gave you my personal thoughts about it. Um, and, uh, again, uh, I do appreciate everyone's comments. I think they were very constructive and, and provided good input on things, uh, in the town. Uh, so with that, I, got, I just have one more comment. Yes, sir. Yep. I just, I wanted to address Jay, uh, Mr. Kopstein. Uh, honestly, you know, there's, you know, social media, you know, I'm on social media all the time. Uh, you know, I use it to promote the town, to promote businesses. I, I that, that's, that's my purpose. Um, there, I'm going to segue into the mental health issue that we have in this country, and it is completely irresponsible to put something up like you th that you stated was on there. And I saw it. I saw it. I chose to ignore it because, um, you know, it just wasn't worth my time. But for someone to put something up there like that, it could easily, easily be misconstrued that he meant or she meant extermination of town board members, especially if somebody is suffering from a mental health issue. And that is a significant problem. And if you don't understand, not you, but if the person doesn't understand that something like that, whether it was meant in that fashion or not, is completely irresponsible and could really, you know, cause, you know, things that you may not want to cause is is just amazing to me and so I, I really um i i sit here in dismay i have no further comments i i agree um uh, it's disturbing it's creepy you know to think that there's a member of the community that would write as the writer number three wrote an extermination um and that the other people that wrote they only got half of it right so I guess but that's inside baseball people don't know that and uh you know there was no there was no synagogue it was as I recall you read that was damaged it was actually a menorah that was damaged neither whether either of them of them is damaged isn't a good thing but um, evidently, they didn't get their facts right, and I know the police is still actively working on that case, and um, they have plans to do um, further investigation on that. Um, but thank you for bringing that to light in our community where we preach that we will not tolerate that type of behavior. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we will go to personnel. We will accept with regret uh, the resignation received from a su Assistant Superintendent Dan Wozeski from the Parks Rec Department, effective July 25th, 2022. Dan is moving on uh, to be the Parks and Rec Superintendent down in the village of Tarrytown, and we wish him all the best and thank him for his service to the town of Yorktown. 
We are going to appoint Kenneth Scroy to the position of police lieutenant in the Yorktown Police Department. We are going to appoint Anthony Di Pietro Antonio, who I've known since, geez, I don't even, Woo. yeah, a long time, to the position of police sergeant in the Yorktown Police Department. Way to go. And we're going to appoint Brianna Margie to the position of intermediate clerk in the building department. May I have a motion to accept those? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Very good. We look forward to, and uh, Madam Clerk, do we know when the swearing-ins for those police officers are going to be? I have not been advised of that, but they don't start until the 25th. Okay, great. If you could just let the town board know, that would be perfect. Uh, so we can make I sure can we can attend. It's probably the 26th day on my schedule. All right. Um, I think we're going to go to public hearings. We have a public hearing to consider authorizing the planning board to process Dorchester Glen subdivision, utilizing flexibility standards. The clerk is showing the notice. We're going to have our director of planning, John Tegeter, to the podium. And I think we also have Joe Rena. Joe, are you for this applicant? Yes. Great. Joe and John. It's the Joe and John. It's the Joe and John show. <laughs> you could, just in case we have questions. Yeah. Thank you very much. I just want you warmed up in the bullpen. Is it really? Yeah. Hmm. A bit chilly. By I'm freezing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Joe, when we get the new smart podium, we don't have this problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not seeing anything, Joe. What's that song? Do, 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 do. Jeopardy. Sorry, Tom. Conductivity. Too far, no. I don't know. Why. He's got a Dell, not an Apple. Yes, I know the button's there, but the button is behind my laptop. Oh, I got it. Sorry. I'll just, I'll just go like this. And appreciate no further, no further. Okay. Comments. So, um. Ecco, quel questo quel che volevo dire. There we go. All right. Good evening, Joseph Reen, the principal site design consultants representing uh, Dorchester Glen. Um, Dorchester Glen is um, a proposed subdivision of 24 acres, which are 24 plus acres, which are located at the exact access at the end of Maxwell Drive and also accessed from uh, Dorchester Heights Drive uh, to, the, uh, to the west. Um, the property is, is the, uh, currently holds the residence of the King Card family. Um, it's located, this is, this is the King Card home here, which is going to remain. It's at the end of Maxwell Drive is the current access to that site. Uh, the proposal that's before the planning board is to subdivide the property into five lots, which will include, one, uh, one lot will include the existing residence. Uh, we would extend Dorchester drive into the property and create a cul-de-sac. Off that cul-de-sac, we would service four new lots. Uh, the, the request that's before the um, board tonight is to authorize the planning board to use the flexibility standards, which uh, will allow us to develop a subdivision which has lower impact on the uh, slopes, on the environment, by reducing the amount of um, roadway 
uh, the roadway would be private versus a town road, so the town would not be responsible for maintaining it. Uh, the, uh, and again, the flexibility part of it allows the, the planning board uh, a hand in, in uh, changing the standards to pr better position the homes and driveways and whatnot to uh, have less impact on the, on the environment. Um, the project is serviced by public water and public sewer and it conforms to all the zoning requirements uh, in the conventional sense. So that's the request that's before the board now to, to authorize the planning board to use the flexibility standards. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Um, the only, and Madam Clerk, I don't know if you have uh, anything more, but the only I re the only one we received when we referred this out was from Abaca. Do you have anything more than that? Conservation Board did also. I haven't seen that. If you could share that with me. Conservation Board, New York City. So the Conservation Board prefers a flexibility plan and will offer other comments when the fully realized plan is developed. I have a BACA. I don't have you can keep a BACA. County, it's out of their jurisdiction. And DEP. Yeah, I should mention this this is subject to the DEP review and issuance of a stormwater permit. Right, 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 right. So right. we will have to deal with all that, uh, all the stormwater and, and meet the uh, zero increase r runoff and quality standards for, for stormwater. Yeah, I mean, they're only, um, they provided some comments regarding things that I think you're going to have to deal with on their review. In, in regards to our consideration here, number three, the conventional subdivision plan appears to present less impervious surfaces in comparison to the flexibility subdivision plan. Project sponsors encouraged to provide a comparison of the layout alternatives that address the potential impacts. Uh, to on-site New York State regulated wetland A-22 and surface water features and demonstrates which alternative better avoids and or adequately mitigates the identified impacts, which I'm sure you're going to do as part of your general mm -hmm. review. And then uh, Abaca said that they had uh, no objections to the proposal. Anything any, on the DEP side? Anything on uh, that? That's all part of your normal traditional. Yeah, that, that, that's all. You know, once we're yeah. into this in, in the D, in the uh, planning board process, <coughs> any approval by the planning board will be conditioned on the DEP approval. Right. But we've already we've already um, started that um, process with the DEP, and we're going to be setting up testing with them in the as soon as they give us a date that they're available uh, to begin soil testing and whatnot. Right. So that's, you know, it's... Okay. Is there wetland stand. buffers up there, Joe? Are there um, are yeah, buffers so right the there? the wetland buffer is this, um, is this line right here, mm -hmm. that dash line right there. So you can see we're well away from that. Yep. This is the wetland line here. Yep. Um, um, we're waiting for the uh, DC uh, to come out and just verify that the flags are accurate. Um, we have no doubt about that because when this was last flagged uh, back in the er early 2000s, it's almost identical. It was almost in an identical location. So we have no doubt that it's okay. uh, going to be okay. And of course, this is referred to us by the planning boards. So the planning board uh, supports the flexibility standards. Uh, Mr. Shagador, is there anything that we're missing? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Paganelli. So we're talking a private road here, correct? Correct. How is maintenance going to be? Is it going to be a homeowners association? Yes. Is that the plan? Yes. Because I just don't want a private road that five, ten years down the road gets petitioned to be a public road, and I've had no input as to how that road was constructed. Okay. So, <laughs> and it'd be a little hard to yeah. check after the fact. So, uh, Dave, the intent is to build it to town standards, except for the width. Okay. And the length. Okay. So we're. We're going to build the roadway to town standards, and we're going to provide the right-of-way. So if, 
for some reason in the future the, the property owners decide to get together and they want to make it a town road everything is in place other than making it the proper width okay all right good thank you okay mr tater anything you want to add uh i just will add that's a good point and we've been talking about that <laughs> we with have Joe, been talking about that because that happens often yes uh so there has been some discussions about that um and in keeping with that and just looking at the plan and pursuant to what dep had said i i think that um you know these lot lines possibly will be modified from here on in and this plan will pro probably be refined somewhat to be even more um less impactful to the environment so, mm -hmm. but flexibility is definitely uh, a tool that it enables the planning board to do exactly that so that's right. why it's right. sent over okay yep okay okay any questions for either mr rena or mr taggater from the board no no all right then we will open it up for public comment anybody want to speak on this matter this is a public hearing regarding flexibility standards for Dorchester Glen subdivision. Did anybody want to speak on this matter? Anyone from the public who wants to speak? Going once, going twice. Okay, and with no one coming forward, we'll make a motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, John. Since there's no since there was no public comment on this or opposition i mean does the board want to I cons consider a consider a, a, a resolution to approve it i mean what's the what's your time what's the timeline look like um well you know we're <clears throat> we're working with the summer schedule for the planning board and, and we, you know we'd like to get back to them with and uh, move forward with this so at their next their next meeting mm -hmm. well, look we got no no public comment no opposition I mean, there's really no reason to hold this up. I mean, no. let's let's uh, let's Adam, make a resolution and move this forward. Adam, have you a chance to review no the draft resolution? No, I have not. Mr. Taggart, anything you want to discuss about the draft resolution? No. <laughs> no. That was no. a lot of effort for a no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, only to say that it's a standard resolution. We've done them many times before. It contains description of the property, why we're doing it, and uh, so it's fairly standard. So no, I don't really have any other descriptions other than passing no. a little joke for you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> easy, John. So take it easy. Took more time to, to get up and the Town board, what do you want to do? <laughs> I'm ready. I, I I'm see ready. Move forward. Right. move forward with it. So it reads as follows, and you're going to make me read the F5550s. Five, 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 Whereas the Yorktown Planning Board is currently reviewing the application of John and Elaine Kinkart here and after the applicant for approval of the proposed Dorchester Glen subdivision, and whereas the property owned by the applicant consists of 24.26 acres in the R120 zoning district and is located at 1643 Maxwell Drive, also known as Section 15.20 Block three lot six on the town of Yorktown tax map here and after referred to as the property whereas the applicant proposes five lots to build four new residential dwellings and one existing dwelling has demonstrated that five lots can be reasonably accommodated by a conventional subdivision complying with the requirements of the R120 zoning district and whereas the conventional subdivision would require significant clearing and excavation in order to comply with the requirements of the R120 zoning district and whereas the Yorktown Planning Board is a lead agency with respect to CEQA, and whereas after review and evaluation, the Yorktown Planning Board has determined that it would be beneficial to apply flexibility standards pursuant to Chapter 300, Article 5, Section 300-22 of the Code of the Town of Yorktown, which would reduce the proposed grading disturbance of the subdivision, including a significant reduction in the, reg in the regarding of steep slopes, preserve more trees and protected woodlands. And whereas the Yorktown Planning Board has requested authorization from the Town Board to apply flexibility standards pursuant to Chapter 300, Article 5, Section 300-22 in order to, pr to promote development that is sensitive to the land by means of modifying the application of the Zoning Code's bulk, bulk requirements with respect to yard setbacks, building height, lot frontage, lot coverage, lot area, and minimum floor area. 
And whereas the proposed layout on which the Yorktown Planning Board is basing this request is shown on two sheets titled Site Plan and Conventional Subdivision Plan prepared by Site Design Consultants dated July 6, 2022 and March 30th, 2022 respectively with no revisions and is for a maximum of five lots for single family dwellings. And whereas the proposed subdivision will be accessed by a private road from Dorchester Drive and whereas the Yorktown Planning Board is proposing that the width of the private road be reduced from the required 24 feet to 16 feet in order to minimize disturbance and reduce impervious services with various reductions in required lot frontages. And whereas public hearing to consider these requests was convened on the 19th of July, 2022 at 7 p.m., during which public hearing the applicant presented information and arguments in favor of granting the authorization and members of the surrounding neighborhood and the public at large were afforded the opportunity to present information and express their views concerning the application. And whereas the applicant has advised the town board that the subdivision plan will have no more than five lots for five single family dwellings. Now, therefore, be, be it resolved that the requests of the Yorktown Planning Board for authorization to use flexibility standards pursuant to Chapter 300, Article 5, Section 300-22 is granted in order to promote development that is sensitive to the land by means of modifying the application of the zoning codes, bulk requirements with respect to yard setbacks, building height, lot frontage, lot coverage, lot area, and minimized minim, minimum floor area, and be it further resolved at the request of the Yorktown Planning Board for authorization to use flexibility standards pursuant to Chapter 300, Article 5, Section 300-22, to eliminate the requirement that the proposed building lots have frontage on a public street is granted. And be it further resolved that the request of the Yorktown Planning Board for, law, for authorization to use flexibility standards pursuant to, what chapter? 300, 300. Article 5, Section 300-22, <laughs> to modify the requirement for 24-foot wide road pavement for the private road is granted. And be it further resolved that the maximum density of the 24.26 acre property shall be five residential lots. Mr. Paganelli, are you good with that width? How much was the width again? 16. 16. I buzzed out around the 400, 300. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's chapter 300, <laughs> article five. I can read the beach. I'm There's pretty sure too many I can, numbers. I can, I'm pretty that. sure I can beep off this now. Uh, uh, Why don't you uh, the whole 24 thing? foot wide. 24 is fine. Yeah. 24 is good. Road, okay. I'm just making sure that you're comfortable and that you've input on this What's since six, you're here. 16. 16. I'm sorry. 16. Oh, we're going to 16. 16. 16. 24 to 16. So the mid yeah. Reduce from the required yeah, 24 feet the to 16 feet. feet. So what this what this does, I think, is allows the planning board to go to a minimum of 16 feet. Which means you can go a little. We can go a little more per, per discussions with you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can we? Birds all. Birds all is 15. So can we say yeah. though to modify? Yeah, through there. Yeah, it's scary road. Why? Can we just say no? Let adding two extra feet in would be an issue. No. You want to foot the illegal road. Even Dave, do you want to know less than? Well, no we could, less we'll, than 16. We'll meet on it. Yeah, no, no, less no less than 16, 16 so you no have a floor? No less than 16. Yeah. Do you want 18? I would prefer 18. Thoughts on 18. I see it coming to the town at some point. That right. yeah. it, will, it will eventually be petitioned. Nobody wants to pay that maintenance, so they'd like to put that on us. And they're paying taxes. They would, should rightfully have that opportunity. I'm just going to say no less than 16 is no less than 16. 18. And it can be 18. Long. If you want to just make it no less than 18, I have no problem with that. I don't know if they do, but certainly discussions on all of the aspects of the subdivision, including the road width, are not I just, ceasing here. I just think right. the no. I just think the no less than 16 gives you a floor, and then you guys can work together I, I on, the, that, on the I 18. That, the six, the, no less than 16. No less than 16. <clears throat> you should always refuse it when you petition to have the town take it. You know the the the, the, that. <laughs> the other thing with that Dave also is that the um, uh, being on the fire advisory board I know they have a they're going to have anything less than 15 feet wide so right so we we've amended it to authorize to modify the requirement for 24 foot wide pavement no less than six to no less than 16 feet wide for the private road is granted we're okay with that yeah no less than 16 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I, mean, I said, we down the road. If it's not up to snuff and it's creating a problem, I just no, thank you. I just want to. But it, the road. it also, I just think, like based off of mouse? what, yeah, 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 yeah. no. But I, <laughs> I just think though that you still have time to figure this part yeah. out from the site yeah. plan standpoint. So well, you can still achieve. You may still be able to achieve 18, but we know it's not going to be less than we 16. We have a similar situation with the development on Hanover, where there's a right of way there, and there's 
30 dead trees. Yeah. That well, was going to address as we move forward with site plan approach. Was there a reason why you, why we go, why 16 was picked? Or there um, was just like, well, a, is it yeah, arbitrary? I mean, there must be a reason for well, it. Well, okay. So first of all, the underlying thing is the applicant would like to keep it private, a private road. So that's, that's one thing. And also you then, shave off the lot, the lot. Well, <laughs> and, and you're, you're, you're really only accessing four, four homes off it. It's not like it's it's a heavy traffic load, and oh, it's a okay. short and it's a short little you know it's not really okay. much of a, a road. So all right, but a fire a fire truck's got to get in there. But as long got, as like, can, I mean, like right, as long as they can get in there, then we should you know that give that them the should flexibility be to go to eighteen if yeah, we need give to. Yeah, the flexibility to go to eighteen. Eighteen would be preferred. All right, so we'll make a motion to pass the resolution yes. with the amendment. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Very good. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk, you got the amendment? Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Serena. Thank you. Play through. Thanks, Joe. Thank Want you. Good night. Want to say All right, next, we have a public hearing to consider the abandonment of an existing paper road at the intersection of Summit Thanks, Street and Montrose Road, the Summer Street Paper Road. The clerk is showing the advertisement. We'll bring... Thank you, sir. Michael Grace forward, representing the applicants. Good evening, Mr. Grace. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a uh, uh, get some deburden you, uh, Ms. Hmm? Maganelli. Uh, this is a, a terminus of what was Summit Street, where it uh, terminates behind a private uh, piece of property that was developed on countryside. So it's a, a piece of a uh, map road that was never improved um, at any point. Um, I have the neighbor here. It's uh, the one neighbor here. Uh, Ed Lackman's on one side of the road. And Pete Schmidt's on the other side of the road. Uh, based upon the law, this piece of property is still owned by West Putt Realty, which is the actual developer and subdivider of all the property up there. Town does not own it. You don't have any title to it. Um, what you do have is a right to develop it as a town road as it appears that terminus appears on a filed subdivision map so legally it is an irrevocable offer of dedication to the town to use for road purposes only um, since that's never going to happen um, unless you knock down a house on california right <laughs> it's never going to happen uh and quite frankly over the last uh, several decades uh, pete schmidt who's uh, a budding owner has uh actually t t tended to that uh, property he has taken down several large trees he has regraded it he has maintained it he's kept it up at this point um we are looking for that uh the town to abandon uh, basically its right to um uh, accept the offer of dedication by having the road on a filed map um and that's in order to allow the two abutting property owners the Schmidt family and Lackermans to effectively put that property to good use. So that's essentially what we're asking. Um, the only other issue uh, essentially is that uh, at the town at some point decided to give the um, neighbor abutting the terminus of it a uh, uh, the one the, in California? Uh, yeah, a, a sewer line through that try to I will if I speak again. <laughs> so uh, we will. the sewer line. <laughs> that, didn't take, that didn't take long. No. Mike, is the sewer line in place now? The sewer Dan? line's in place. We're having it surveyed and we'll go. But California and, already has sewers. I, I don't. This was Michael Quinn's thing. I don't know what he no, did. No, I don't did see where that would ever be the case where that sewer line would come from that paper road onto California Road. I, I, no. It, I think I, it goes I, through I, it. It goes through. It goes, uh, I guess, onto Montrose. So whatever they did, they, they, they ran it the other way, maybe for convenience because the, maybe the septic was in the backyard, so they ran it the other way. So anyhow, it doesn't make any difference. We're going to, we're going to map it. And, uh, and have, we'd have, if there was repairs necessary, would the town yeah, have, we'll the town would have an easement? Yeah, we'll give an easement okay. for that. So that will take care of that. But at least this way, you know, the, the problem and in back there is that, uh, you know, there's been ongoing issue with trees coming down. Yes. And the town's been... been yeah, well, I'm been, happy to let that yeah, go. And, it, and, it, and it's, <laughs> it's sizable trees, and they've been cleared by the property owners. It's a burden on the town, and it can be big, could, but 
to good use by the There's two. actually case law that says to that effect, you know, it's paper roads are kind of convoluted, but there's case law that says that if a, an adjacent owner has maintained that property for an excess, I believe it's of 10 years, that then they are they become owner by default yeah they, it's well, something it's very you very can't, strange you can't adversely possess it they want, right. once the, we because we have you can have this other issue up, there, up in mohegan lake there's other issues up there but <laughs> essentially <Excellent. laughs> you know when you get back to the, uh uh i don't want to bore you but it's, it's essentially legally the uh be, you know they used to, they used to just map the roads now you're required to either bond them or improve them before you get the. We have that same issue right. down and off so, Birdsong yeah. and so Starlight. What was in the past, basically, if the lots were being sold, the lot sold adjacent to the unimproved road owned to the center line thereof. So really, what it is is the two property owners own to the center line thereof. All you have is the right to, at some point, build on it, accept the offer of dedication. We're asking you to abandon that. That's all. So, so the the. We got. We did refer this out. County planning says it's a it's a local determination. Mm -hmm. Conservation board no objection. Highway superintendent no issue with regards to this action. That's a nope. direct. That's a direct quote. In case you're wondering. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll remember that. Thank you. In case anyone brings it up in the future. And D and then there's that. And then there's <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, nope. DEP. This is not them. For a different one and planning board uh, approved the abandonment of the terminus summit street they have a resolution uh, in february to that effect so we have no uh, concerns or objections raised by those who it was referred out to who responded so we can go to a public hearing anybody on want to speak on this matter this is the summit street south end of summit street Yes, Howard sir. Frank here, uh, interested taxpayer. I was wondering if there's any tax liens due on this piece of property. And the justification here doesn't have the size. And uh, usually, uh, if it was a public hearing, uh, properly uh, noticed to the neighbors. That wasn't mentioned in your. Uh, we have the yes, notice of the. They were actually noticed by the town and by the applicant. Was this may set a precedent? There are numerous other uh, so called. Uh, private roads, abandoned roads, such as uh, Sunrise Street, where the developer came along uh, with unapproval, burying of water lines and possible septic systems nearby, things like that. So uh, I just wondered if the uh, size of the property and is there any other uh, abundant, uh, abandoned uh, areas that have, has to be addressed here. Okay. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thanks, Mr. Frank. Anyone else would like to speak on this matter before Mr. Grace goes back to the podium? Anybody else who would like to speak on the matter regarding Summit Street? Mr. Grace, do you want to address? Yeah, I'm not, not, not sure, Mr. Frank, what you're asking, but on uh, the essentially the, 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 this area has been surveyed for all underground utilities. There is a sewer line to an abutting uh, a property owner. Uh, with it's a 50 foot wide. And I think it runs about 100 feet deep. So it's about 5,000. I think it's 5,000 square feet altogether. It's five, five to 8,000 square feet. It doesn't doesn't qualify for a building lot, and uh, it's not going to be put to a building lot. It's basically the one, one owner. The, the legally, at this point, the budding property owners own to the center line thereof. If you look at their deeds and look at their title report, what we'll do is that the the the, the normal recital. Before <coughs> roads were bonded or, 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 or improved, before ma maps were filed, is that the developer would have to give rights to the center line of the abutting roads in order to allow for access of the of the, of the properties that were on part of the filed map to have access to, to their property. So that's what it, the status, the legal status of the of the road, is that it's owned by the actually owned by the two uh, property half. owners, and or the original developer, which would be West Putt, which is a defunct corporation at this point, and b the burden on the, either the, the, the budding property owners is once they get passed through um, y your abandonment of your right for, to accept the offer of dedication is to probably do an action to quiet title, which is an expensive proposition in and of itself. Do but we know, do we know that the highway superintendent, similar to the ring road, 
do we do I have to file it with the county in terms of disowning that particular? No, one? because you've never. It's it's actually you've never, never owned done it. that. You've never owned it. You never. You you you. you, you it, it's, it's, transfer. It's, it's never been it's never been accepted as a. No, as you're a, right. We've never owned it, yeah. right? But if, it, if but it, how do you legally, this you know, give up the right to possibly use it for utilities uh, in the future? The the idea is that the, some of the abutting property owners are, are having physical improvements done on their properties that would encroach on their portion of what they own. So rather than making an it's an investment in their property, either for structures or other appurtenances to their property. You don't want to do it where there may be issues of title. So the idea is to you know, just clear cleaning. things up. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this is just cleaning things up. It's, yeah, I'm not trying to be obstructionist, no. but I spent countless hours at Cornell with a professor about paper roads. And yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're so convoluted. They're different in every particular area. We've got one at the end of Birch Street. We've got them all over York. Well, the other alternative, which is both property owners could come in and petition the town to improve it. All right, and we don't want that at all. <laughs> we, don't. we want no part of so that. You're way ahead, you're way, way, way ahead of the game on this one. Thank no, you, Mr. I Grace. I appreciate the education. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, no, Any just, questions from the town board? Mm -mm. Uh, and uh, the rec I, actually, the request is that the, you know, I don't think they closed. The, the mechanism by doing it would be to, just to have the town execute a quick claim deed. Yeah, which exactly. We will prepare and pay the expenses no covenant. of uh, right. a recording. And anything else that the, the town needs. Okay. Uh, so we, what, we don't we don't. Expect but would we create a lot and block for it, or have a lot? No, more? no. It's just going to be absorbed into the two different. Oh. And there's no. And and to Mr. Frank's other question: there is no tax liabilities because it ended up being a non. A non lot. lot yeah. yeah. And the and the other thing is we we ask that it, it be there be no consideration, other than what the, covering the expenses of, of the conveyance. So that that's the only other thing that we would ask. All right, so let's make a motion to. Is there, are there any other co public comments? Anything else uh, for the public? This is uh, just I, I, if you have. Everyone, take the podium. This is Pete Schmidt. He's the next. Schmidt. Uh, I live on two eleven Montrose Road, Yorktown. How are you? Do you like ice cream, oh. Mr. Schmidt? <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> I know. I know. That's the No, but thank you. So. But I have three minutes, right? Go for it. No, in a public hearing, you can. No, you three minutes. You can talk no, as long good. as you want. 30 seconds. That's 30 it. seconds. Okay. <laughs> I've lived at 211 Montrose Road for approximately 30 years. And I listened to Mike on TV <laughs> with his first opening, and he said exactly word for word what I'm going to tell you. Mm-hmm. That paper road is, it wasn't just a paper road. That was my entrance to get into my house, mm -hmm. which I item for it. Mm -hmm. I paved it. Mm -hmm. I've removed three, three dead trees. Mm -hmm. Two of them landed on my kids' cars. Mm. Lovely. The first one, when I first moved in, was no exaggeration, four and a half feet around. It was about 35 feet tall, what was left of it. And you could walk inside it. My kids used to go in there. My wife used to go nuts. <laughs> I called the town it three must times. Must so fun. <laughs> Matt, you were probably 10 years old, so you're, you're out of this. <laughs> I'm out of it, too. <laughs> you're out of it, too. We, we, got, we got covered. Not because of me. <laughs> we got covered, Dave. Have we got any oldies but goodies here? But... I called three times to have that tree removed because I knew it wasn't mine. It was mm -hmm. the town's. Mm -hmm. Well, 35 years ago, you, you didn't get the same results as you get nowadays. I removed that one, too. And when I was done removing that, I had my nephew come down with heavy equipment and clean out yeah. two dump truck loads of construction debris, old tires, the place... I spent in 30 years in excess of 20000 mm -hmm. on that paper road. That paper road doesn't look like a paper road. I've been mowing no, that grass yep. that yep. I put in yep. for the last 30 years. Yep. So I, I think that, like Mike said, get the monkey off everybody's back. Eddie already had a survey down the middle. Just let it go. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I gave Mr. Grace... The, the photos of the town's trees that were on my cards. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. 
You're more than welcome. Yeah. We appreciate and it. And thank you for taking care of the lawn. <laughs> yeah, I got all that. Now I don't have to do half the lawn. Only half. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from the board? No? Anyone else from the public who wants to speak? No? Nope. We'll make a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Mr. Rodriguez, you want to... What do you want to do here? He wants to hold off. I think, well, I think we should... I can draft the resolution and it can be voted on on Tuesday. Uh, works. All right, and if you're looking for... Which, ideas, by the way, is subject to permissive referendum. Okay. Uh, but, and right. if you're looking for ideas for the $3.7 million and a walkable downtown, everything else, guess what I'm going to suggest? Uh, the highway department? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Grace, have a good night. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> All right, resolutions. We are going to approve a stormwater management <clears throat> permit for 2823 Hickory Mike. Street. We're going to approve a stormwater management permit for 3628 Flanders Drive. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're going to make a motion to go into closed session to discuss litigation. So moved. And then we will adjourn from there. So moved. So moved. Oh, and I'm sorry. Real quickly, I just want to publicly acknowledge and thank Brian Marshauser for his 10 years of service at the Yorktown News. Brian's going to be moving on to a new position. Uh, I Grew up with Brian, went to high school with Brian, ran track with Brian, and we wish him all the best on his next endeavor, and he's done this town proud. So, Brian, congratulations on your new job. Congratulations. congratulations. Bye, Brian. Bye. We're still going to call you. Still going to call you. <laughs> all right, Yorktown, have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> I'll call Zoe. Well, we got a motion. We got a second. Second. For those all in favor. Aye. Aye.